Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel once again. In today's video, I'm gonna show you some beautiful turkey recipes that showcase just how useful it is to roast your own turkey at home, holiday season or not. This glorified gravy toast and red wine braised turkey leg risotto are just a glimpse at what you can do with freshly roasted turkey. Uh, but another aspect of this video is food and flavor preservation. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Food Saver and their beast of a machine, the VS3000 vacuum seal unit. As you can see, it creates a very strong seal, much stronger than I even anticipated, which eliminates altogether freezer burn and the transfer of undesirable fridge flavors, and those two are a big one for me. Plus, you can preserve your favorite seasonal cravings long after the holidays have passed with no storage downside. And that's been really nice with some of my overages in the garden this year, such as these squash and figs. Okay, enough said, let's dive into the recipes. First things first is getting the turkey broken down. You can whole roast the turkey, uh, but sectioning it works nicely for these recipes, especially keeping in mind food preservation and getting the most out of bird in different ways. Uh, so you're gonna remove the legs first by popping out the leg joint and separating it with a clean stroke of the knife in between the thigh and back. Once the legs are removed, separate the back from the breast portion of the turkey, then remove the wings as well until you have just the breast portion of the bird which is called the crown. I don't always brine my turkey, but every once in a while I like to do it, especially if I have some time. Uh, so in a big pot or cooler that's about a third filled up with cold water, you're gonna add in the salt, brown sugar, fennel seeds, cardamom, whole peppercorns, sliced lemons, bay leaves, and fresh rosemary sage and thyme. You're gonna give this a good mix and then add in the crown, legs, and wings and let this sit for about two to six hours or even overnight. If you don't have the fridge space, I recommend doing this in a cooler and adding ice to the brine to keep it cold throughout the process. As a nice little hygiene side note, when you're working with turkey as big as it is, you wanna always clean your prep station with a damp towel that has a little bit of bleach in it to ensure no cross-contamination happens. When you're done brining the turkey, you're gonna take it out of the brine, blot off any excess moisture with a dry towel, and it's time to start cooking. For the red wine braised turkey legs, using a Rondo or Dutch oven like this one, add in the onions, crushed garlic, and brined turkey legs. You're gonna add some salt and cracked black pepper, fresh rosemary and thyme, and of course, a generous amount of red wine. Then let it set aside until you are ready to bake. Now for the breasts of the turkey, I'm going to generously coat them with soft butter all around. Then I'm gonna season them with some salt, fresh cracked black pepper, torn sage, rosemary, and thyme. There's kind of a theme going on here. Then I'm going to cook the crown along with the wings and the legs in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about two hours or until the legs are fall off the bone tender and the breasts have reached an internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit and is nice and golden brown. Also, you wanna make sure to roast the giblets alongside the breasts as a rich addition to the turkey stock later on. <laughs> I guess my son was sneakily curious about what was going on in the kitchen whilst pretending to eat his own arm, I guess in anticipation of this meal. Uh, he's definitely my boy, that's for sure. Once the turkey is done, you're gonna remove it from the oven. And one of the things I like to do is to let it rest with the breasts facing down since the juices will fall into the thickest part of the breast meat rather than away. Let the meat rest for about 15 to 20 minutes or until you can handle it without burning your fingers. When it's rested, carve the two breasts away from the bone and continue roasting the turkey bits with this portion added to the tray. 
Also, this is a good time to remove the legs from the brazing liquid to cool down before vacuum packing. Vacuum packing really doesn't work with hot foods because of air slash moisture expansion. So just keep that in mind. When the bones that are roasting in the oven are a dark golden brown, remove them from the oven and add the roasted bits to a stock pot that's about halfway filled up with water, along with some white onion, crushed garlic, some of the drippings from the pan, fresh rosemary and thyme, and bay leaves. Cook this on a simmer for about two hours. Just make sure all the bones are submerged in water during the process. All right, so once the stock is rolling, now comes the fun part for me, vacuum sealing. Now this VS3180 unit from Food Saver has quite a few options when it comes to sealing. You can adjust the unit to dry, moist, or sous vide uses, but I really love the pulse option since it lets me adjust the desired seal manually. Also, it has a great feature with this handheld vacuum seal that works perfectly in concert with their Food Saver containers for sauces, stocks, marinades, and much, much more. Definitely a lot of options with this unit when it comes to the world of food and flavor preservation. One of the things I'm going to be making a lot more of at home with this machine, aside from the obvious stored uses on leftovers, is sliced lunch meats for the kiddos because roasting your own turkey or even chicken at home is about five times cheaper than store-bought lunch meat, stores about five times longer in the freezer, and you can customize the flavor to your family's cravings. The only issue in the past for me has been uh, storage, since whole roasting at home can be a little bit of work. You really want to make sure you have a solid food preservation plan beforehand. Um, this food saver is now that plan. The seal is incredibly strong, and after using it a few times now, my storage game has been majorly upgraded. All right, so when you're ready to start whipping up these recipes, you're gonna remove the breasts and the legs from the fridge or freezer. If it's from the freezer, make sure to let them thaw out. Then remove them from the bag and bake in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven until hot through and through. Just try not to continue cooking the meat, otherwise they will dry out. While that's getting hot in the oven, it's time to prep out the risotto and the gravy for the recipes. So in a small saucepan that's on medium heat, melt down the butter, then add in the all-purpose flour and whisk it together until it forms a loose paste. Then add in the turkey stock a little at a time until you reach the desired gravy texture. Some people like it really thick, some people like it a little saucy. Remove it from the heat and cover until you're ready to use it. For the risotto, you're gonna get a medium-sized wide mouth pot on low to medium heat, then add in the olive oil and onions and cook until they are translucent. Next, add in the risotto or the arborio rice and stir vigorously to start to stimulate the starch and the rice. After a minute or two of stirring, add in the white wine and continue to stir until the wine is almost cooked out and the rice is very creamy. While continuing to stir, start to add a ladle at a time of hot turkey stock until the rice is slightly al dente and has thickened significantly. Finish it with a pad of butter and a generous handful of Parmesan. The final product should be creamy, but still loose enough when tapped will fall flat on the plate. Now that the risotto and gravy are done, it's time to remove the breasts and legs from the oven. I'm going to start to shred the leg meat with a fork into tender, chunky strips. Then I'm gonna add that to the reduced red wine braising liquid, just so it gets all nice and saturated with that beautiful red wine flavor. For the glorified gravy toast, I'm going to cleanly slice up the roasted turkey breast for a beautiful fanned out presentation. And now it's time to plate.
So the gravy toast is simple toasted sourdough, a proper layer of gravy, freshly sliced smoking hot turkey, fresh herbs, and of course, a final layer of gravy and cracked black pepper. For the risotto, the creamy Parmesan rizzo goes down first and gently tapped flat, then topped with the glistening red wine braised turkey legs, and finally, some fresh parsley from the garden. On top of all this, I'll be saving my precious gravy gold using the handheld vacuum sealer and will be able to use it for much, much longer than I previously could. I absolutely hate throwing away gravy. And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed the tricks and tips of these recipes with food preservation in mind. Okay, <laughs> what's up guys? Hopefully you enjoyed um, my take on stretching or uh, really getting the most out of a whole roasted turkey. There's lots of different ways to do it. Obviously I split it into two, um, sped up the process just a little bit because I had a few different variations I wanted to play around with. And yeah, this is great. I had a lot of fun using the food saver. I've been using vacuum packs for, I don't know, more than a decade or so, especially when they became really popular in commercial kitchens super useful machines it is a beast like this addition alone just to be able to uh, vacuum pack um, liquids in those containers is kind of a game changer in a lot of different ways you could even think about using marinations as well it's a killer unit and um, yeah I, i'm excited about the recipe so i'm gonna run through both of these and tell you guys how i did this is like reminds me of home leftover turkey or if you wanna make it like what I did today, a little more glorified, use the fresh turkey and just kind of jazz it up a bit. But gravy and toast is like home for me. I gotta say, probably one of the better turkeys I've ever made. Mmm. Mmm. What I love about this is it's so leftover friendly, but um, as I showed you guys in this video, you can out, you can also make it kind of the first of um, with the turkey. If you make it just a really beautiful presentation, nice fanned out turkey, little fresh herbs on top, cracked black pepper. <clears throat> if you serve this at Thanksgiving instead of mashed potatoes and corn and that whole bit, a lot of people would be very impressed. Um, but this is definitely intended for leftovers and just being able to get a little bit more out of that turkey that you usually spend all day roasting. So super good, simple gravy, simple presentation. Reminds me of home. Now this, this I'm very excited about. I, I feel like you should be able to do this every, um, every other Thanksgiving at least. This is so worth it. I mean, you have that glistening um, braised turkey leg and the red wine sauce, the creamy risotto. <laughs> this looks really good. Mmm, the fresh herbs. Got some parsley going in the garden. So good. Mm. This stuff makes me happy. The contrast of the creamy risotto and that tart but sweet buttery braised turkey leg is, it's like a, it just instantly uh, you develop a craving for it. I mean, I feel like maybe we're doing Thanksgiving wrong. This is where it's at. Um, the food saver makes things like this super, super easy because you can portion out. That's another thing. You can really portion out a lot of things by um, sectioning off your bags. And so you can almost uh, compartmentalize different dishes and keep them uh, really airtight and locked in with all those flavors. Because there's nothing more than I hate when I go to freeze something and I try to do like the little suction with my lips and it just doesn't work uh, with plastic bags. This just, I mean, it's like 99.9% .9 of the air gets removed, which is great for preservation, um, you know, freezer flavor transfer and then freezer burn. So those are the things that really bother me um, when it comes to freezing. And so this also gives you the, the other advantage of compartmentalizing and uh, almost portioning out certain recipes because like this risotto, you don't really need that whole leg um, unless you're serving you know, five or six people. You might uh, use both the legs. You can separate the two and compartmentalize it if you have a smaller family or if you have a bigger family and you just want to use the breasts first and use the you know, chicken or the turkey legs later on. It just makes life so much easier. Super fun recipes. I gotta have at least one more bite of this. Mm. 
It's insane how many ideas I have for this because you can stretch a lot. You can get the most out of your meals by vacuum packing or leftover braised meat or things like that. Vacuum pack it, save it for another day and jazz it up. So thanks again uh, to Food Saver for sponsoring this video. If you guys wanna check it out, um, check my description box, I'll leave a link. If you guys wanna go purchase one of them, feel free and um, enjoy your new endeavors on vacuum packing at home. So if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, comment down below for future video requests, things you wanna see on my channel. Um, all the ingredient lists will be in my description all the way at the bottom, so check that out. And I'll see you guys next time with another video. Later guys.